2023 is coming to an end and as a street photography year it has been very productive so in this video i'll go over my favorite photos my most used gear best purchases and also my wish list for next year all right let's get into it so let's start with my most used gear this year and it has been a tie and that is because i have two different cameras and before year 2023 i only had my sony a7c and the primary purpose of that camera was to do street photography but since I started this channel and got serious about it, I actually bought another camera this year and that is the Fuji X100D and if you've been following my channel, you know that I bought this camera during the summer. I've been using this camera as my primary camera for street photography for the last six months. So it's a little bit of a tie, but for street photography exclusively, I would say this camera has been my most used gear and camera this year. And I really have grown into liking this camera a lot. I made a video about how I was a little bit in doubt about if this was really for me. But every time I take it out, I come home and I think this is the right camera. But there are some things about it that really annoys me. And you can watch that video where I also talk about it a little bit. And for my Sony a7C, I had that camera for almost three years now and recently I had to send it for repair and, and actually they found out the main board was completely fried so I basically got a new camera inside the same body. So I mostly use my Sony a7C for recording for this channel whereas this camera is actually my everyday carry camera. I do actually try to practice what I preach and take this out every time I go out even though I'm not planning on going on a photo walk. So the Fuji X100B has been my most used camera. I do use my Sony a7C for street photography and I've used it a handful of times this year as well. And it's mostly because I have a certain need or I want to do some specific street photography style and then I take out my Sony a7C because I have four different prime lenses and they are quite expensive and also they're very fast. The fact that I like to do night street photography and I'm just comfortable using my Sony a7C for that. My most used lens has been the 55mm lens, it's a Sony Zeiss lens. I absolutely love this lens, I raved about it on my channel before. So this has been also my most used lens for my Sony a7C and obviously for my Fuji X100V it has a 35mm equivalent as I also mentioned before. So when I want to be creative or I want to do something very specific, I take out this. And I also use my 35mm that I also have a love-hate relationship with. But that is primarily for B-roll because it is a wide angle and it captures a lot of the scene and I'm able to crop in. So it's really handy that way. I have also a few other items that I use interchangeably and I'm not going to go over each item here because I made a few videos about it in the past. You can check it out in the playlist. But my most used gear in addition to my camera and the lens is uh, the filters. I have an ND filter that I really like to have with me, especially when it's sunny outside. And I also have my black mist filter that I love to use and to get that hazy, dreamy look. And I also have it on right now to film this video. I also carry around my GoPro Hero because it is so lightweight. But I want to have the option of shooting some behind the scene footage or make a POV video. I also have my AirPods Pro and those are noise cancelling and I really love that. I've been doing that for years because I want to stay in the zone. And for me personally, I do that by having some music and block out the traffic noise. So those are some of the items that I carried with me this year a lot. All right, so let's talk about best purchase of 2023. So hands down, my best purchase of this year has been my Fuji X100B. I literally bought that camera where it was impossible to buy it anywhere. It was in back order, it was sold out. And I literally got it within a week after I decided I wanted to buy it completely brand new and in the color that I wanted. And also looking back now that I've had the camera for six months, it has really changed my photography and, the, and how I approach street photography now and the pictures that I make. So I'm really happy about that purchase. And the best runner-up purchase of 2023 has been my photo books. This is a photo book that I completely love. I've bought a total of three photo books recently, I think within the last three months. And the Ernst Haas New York in color 1952 to 1962 has been my favorite one. And I bought this because I decided this year that I wanted to lay off Instagram and other social media outlets and want to be inspired by some of the greats that did this work before me and this generation. So the photo books that I bought has been a long research project for me because it is uh, very different and it's very subjective what people like in terms of what they like in their photography style 
and what resonates and what you kind of feel a connection to. So I watched a few YouTube videos and I uh, read a few reviews and also look at what other YouTubers were talking about and I found my little bit of my niche because it closely resembled to the street style that I personally like. So I found a few photo books. I have a few others on my wish list so that will be something that I'll dig more into in the new year in 2024. I also made a few small purchases throughout 2023 for my photography and it's, some, it's not directly related to my photography, all of it. Mostly it's related to this YouTube channel and the best purchase I've made out of that has definitely been my lantern softbox. So it's a omnidirectional light so you can have more of the light coming from uh, the source compared to my other lighting setup that was a classic softbox. It was I think 120 centimeters or maybe 90 centimeters. It was quite huge and I don't have a lot of space where I'm filming right now. So this small lantern light has been really, really great and I really like the look of it as well. Yeah, so small purchases here and there throughout and it's all been essential for my photography or my filming of these YouTube videos. I recently made a video about all the bad gear that I bought over the years. So that's more kind of a look back from the past seven years. So please do check it out in the playlist. My 2024 gear wish list. So on top of that list, the number one item that I want for next year is a Leica M6. And I want to pair that with a classic focal length of 28 millimeters. So I'm going even wider than I'm normally used to. And I wanted this setup for the longest time. And I think the biggest barrier for me to not buy that is kind of the cost of the Leica camera itself and the lens that has to be purchased in addition. And also all the associated cost with film photography right now. So it's actually quite an expensive hobby. And that's why I didn't buy it yet. So I really hope I can get more into film photography because that is something that I've been dabbling with behind the scenes. I've been really into film photography and I think I mentioned it on the channel here and there. A close second is uh, I narrowed down to a cheap film photography camera, which might be the best option to start with. So I narrowed down to the Olympus Mu 1 or Mu 2, which is a, a reasonable price and especially the Mu 2 is a great uh, little film camera from the, I think it's from the 80s or maybe in the 90s. It has a great lens, uh, which is from Zeiss, it's 2.8 and uh, overall the reviews on that camera is really great. So I'm a little bit in two minds about whether to buy a Leica M6, which I really want. And on the other hand, I have the cheap camera. So if we look at some other items uh, on my wish list, a 40 millimeter focal length lens. And I think the reason why I want this focal length, been doing a lot of street photography with my 35 millimeter because of the Fuji X100V. And on the other hand, when I use my Sony a7C, I primarily use my 55 or the nifty 50 focal length. So I think the 40 millimeter is a great focal length that is just right smack in the middle of those two. And I think I would really love it. And if I look at my wish list from last year, it was actually on there also. So it actually just came back again uh, for, the, for the upcoming year. And for the longest time, I talked about a longer focal length. So I wanted the 105 uh, for a very long time but it's just about budget and kind of the immediate need and I also talk a lot about only buy the gear you need and I, I don't need the 105 I really just want it because I think I would create a need for it so for right now it's further down on the list I also have a wish of upgrading my Sony a7C for a better model and that is primarily because of the video quality the Sony a7C only has 8-bit and that is very restrictive when you're doing videos and recording in 4K, especially in color grading because I color grade everything also. And the one reason for me not prioritizing switching out the camera right now is that my main focus is photography and I do have this channel and this is kind of a byproduct of my hobby. So I want to spend the bulk of my money doing street photography and buying stuff for my street photography. So those are some of the things that I wish for uh, the upcoming year. Our up next is what should I do more of in 2024 and what should I definitely leave in 2023. So if I look into what I should do more in 2024, I would say definitely go on more photo walks. I had a long stretch where I didn't go out on photo walks because I was just demotivated. I didn't feel inspired. The season changed. It was suddenly cold and I didn't really have the same connectedness to going out in the dead of night, which I normally love. I love street photography, especially at night. And I also talked about it before. I want to do more film photography. I want to dig more into that. Uh, I want to explore that more. 
some travel street photography as well i didn't get to travel this year in 2023 that much i definitely want to make that a priority in the upcoming year and for youtube i think i'll like to pivot a little bit more into the vlogging style of videos but i have to think about that and also see how that would provide value to me first of all but also for you as uh, aspiring street photographers. I also want to continue to get my inspiration from photo books. For me personally, it has been a great source of creativity, inspiration, feeling connected to street photography again. A couple of months ago, I watched a great street photography documentary about Vivian Meyer, the nanny street photographer uh, that was discovered a long time after her death. The whole collection of her street photos and you know the street photography that she did back in the 80s. It was so inspiring, I cannot tell you, and it was the best money that I spent to watch that documentary. It's from 2015. I actually caught myself smiling from ear to ear and after that I actually started to get a little bit more motivation uh, into you know street photography and what kind of street photography I like and I also got inspired to buy a few photo books for myself. What should I leave in 2023? I have a few things and I think on top of that list has been to kind of reduce all my social media outlets kind of consumption and especially Instagram. And Instagram has changed a lot over the years and since I started that account uh, it has changed a lot and my motivation is not there anymore in terms of why I did post photos back then I still use it from time to time I don't find inspiration on Instagram anymore it's fine to look at photos from other creators but it doesn't kind of give me anything anymore I find inspiration elsewhere as I also mentioned throughout this video so definitely that is a habit that is that I'm leaving in 2023 I also have a few street photography related bad habits but I made a whole video about it and it will be out next year in, in January but I think I'll leave it at that as a cliffhanger so you can watch that video because there are a few bad habits that I totally should leave in 2023 all right, so my favorite photos that I made in 2023. I have a few favorite photos that I made this year. And I think also looking back now, my street style also shifted a lot from before I had my Fuji X100V and from the time I had it. And it's not for me to kind of tell you what I think is great photos. I just made the photos. But if I had one specific favorite photo, I don't think so. I have multiple and they are very different in style. And one of the key learnings that I've learned this year is that it's not that important to define myself, you know, in terms of street photography style. I kind of thought about that for a long time. You know, I put that myself in kind of a box saying, I like high contrast, light and shadow. I like this specific thing. I like landscape. And now I just look at street photography, expression of what I see, what I think is interesting and if that's a great photo that you also like that's great as well but most of my photos I do like and those I don't like they don't make the cut. I mentioned in the beginning that 2023 for me has been very productive in terms of street photography and just for the purpose of this video and also I was a little bit curious uh, I actually have taken over 6,000 photos this year and I already deleted the photos that were you know useless so basically out of focus or something that I didn't deem worthy of putting into that account so but there are also double so photos that are double so we have to account for that so the number has to be taken with a grain of salt but 6,000 photos and 3,000 of them has been taken with my Fuji X100V. So a, quite a productive year. Also had long stretches where I didn't take photos. All in all, I would say it's just about, you know, finding that inner motivation and also remembering why I'm doing this. And I first and foremost do it for myself. So take care. See you in the next year. Bye.